Today we're going to do a review of real income, the monthly dividend stock. And once this was the favorite of the market, ever dividend investor love it. Still many of them likes, but this stock's going downhill for a while, uh, not alone, but uh, together with other REITs as well. And today we'll be discussing about few details of real income. We're going to talk about its track records, the dividend hikes, the re reliability of the business, talking about FFO per share, FFO ratio, dividend growth, debt, free cash flow per share. Portfo let's talk about the portfolio as well. Uh, I like to relate here uh, the metrics per share is important seeing per share so we know actually the impact is having each one of the shares we own as shareholders. We talk about the news. Um, and I'll talk, am I buying and why? Um, let's discuss as well the herd mentality, why everyone is selling um, and what to do in a situation like that and how much all will pay me in 10 years. So without more delays, let's start. Start by the track record and just for details about the real income, they make part of the dividend aristocrats that they have been increasing the dividends for to over 25 years, 25 years and above. And they also part of the SP 500 and they have amazing track record of 54 years providing monthly dividends. And from these 54 years, they've been increasing without any stop for 25 years and about to complete 30 years. That's just amazing. They have a um, very good uh, annu annual compound total return since 1904 over 10% over 14% to be more precise so they have a very strong track record and that's the stock we talk about is real income discuss about the reliability of the business uh, okay the stock is falling we know that's falling it's going down we're going to discuss a bit of the reason that after as well but let's talk about the FFO funds from operation per share funds from operation is, is similar when we look to stocks we talk about earnings per share and for, but since it reads uh, they operate in a different way we are going to talk about ffo per share okay so interesting to, to note here from 2018 we see the ffo per share increasing that's a good sign because we want this number going up we know that by each share we own we know that they are increasing every single year, even though from 2022, 2023, don't see a big jump here. We are in a tough environment, in a hard situation, but they still, they still, even in the tough environments, they still able to increase the FFO per share, the funds for operation. That's a really good point. We can see here from 2020 to, from 2020 to 2021, we had a drop but they were able to recover uh, really well from 2022. And this probably happened here because 2020, we were badly impacted pandemic and the results of that probably impact the results in 2021 um, from the funds operation. Uh, but it is good to see this recover and I'm excited to see how we go for next years. It still talk about reliability, funds for operation ratio, FFO ratio. So FFO ratio again, nice to see here from previous years. So we have an idea how it's developing over the years. So 80%, 80%, 80% went up here in 2021 and then came down. So it's good to overall we see this going down. What means FFO FFO payout ratio we want is going down, which means that the amount of funds from operation they use to pay the shareholders um, with the dividends. So um, we know they have room here, they pay the dividends and they still have room to reinvest the business, pay debt, and the lowest is number, the safer it is. And it's good to see they were getting safer over the time, it's over the years, and it's really good, which means Re, re, real income is in a better situation today than they were previous years. You can think of that because they're increasing the dividend and still they were able to put the FFO 
payout ratio down and it's really nice metric it's really good i i this give me a nice perspective about this stock let's talk about the dividend and more precisely the dividend growth so the dividend is over six percent at the moment uh, the payout uh, the payout ratio but as a read this year talk about the ffo per payout ratio that we just show previously previously uh, five-year growth rate is being nearly four uh, percent between three to four percent there it's a bit uh, where um, real income stays uh, for the high re real for the high yield we get at the moment i like this growth i think it, do a nice math uh, we get nearly 10 percent nearly two digits to total return and and it's, it's good it's it's interesting um and the dividend growth they have here 25 years but uh, is actually already 29 years so it's really good so when talk about dividend growth real income uh, is just amazing track record uh, they're not the highest um growth is you won't have the highest growth in terms of dividend increase but uh, this stock is about reliability is about track record is about consistency so you might not get the best growth especially now with this dividend at the moment i think it's just a really good uh, for the reliable stock that it is this high dividend with this decent growth is not too bad like for the high di high dividend is not too bad growth um i can't not think that's the really good is the ally still point for me now but okay let's talk about debit we talk about the uh, reits reits the they the is common between the rates they have a high debit because in the type of the business they they have to pay from the taxable income, they have to pay 9% to the shareholders so they can qualify as a REIT. It makes them not be able to retain much cash, not be able to maintain much cash from its operations. They have to borrow money. So that's why they have a lot of leverage. Yeah. So, but, and by debit, we talk about these high interest rates environment. So the REITs are being suffering a lot with that. But it's not much the case of real income. The price is going down because of that, but it's not impacting them as much as impacting all the rates. We can see here in the debt maturities, uh, the weight average expiring interest rate, the highest one here from the next years is 4.68, not even close what the interest rate we see that uh, US face at the moment, 7% around like, so uh they still even the highest year it, it, even the highest average weight there of interest interest rate for the year um is not too bad so they have a good average down here and they are not suffering that much with this uh environment and i hope that uh, from the next years this interest rate at some point will go down and they will be able to start borrowing money. And another thing to point about, to talk about debt, the interest rate is the rating. So uh, the credit rating by Moods and, and SP, they are in the A category. So they have a very good rate credit rating, which means they can borrow money, not as much expensive money as other players have to. So that's very good for the business. When, when they are borrowing money, they have a good rate so they are able to get a better rate they are able to have a more decent rate they won't be that rip they won't suffer from much rip off um when you talk about uh, the interest they they take so uh, reliable stocks have this advantage here very good credit rating better better debt so we talk about the dividend stock we cannot avoid talking about free cash flow so let's look for the free cash free cash flow per share again so we don't worry much about the business being diluted it's bad when the business being diluted but we can understand we are a high interest environment they don't want to borrow money with much high interest now so they thought it was better issue new shares uh, but let's see here free cash flow per share because um, where the dividend we paid from from the free cash flow so we want this free cash flow free cash flow 
been increasing throughout the years and we see they were doing that here we have a data here from 2018 and we can see steadily increasing the free cash flow and even to this current year they are able to increase compared to the last year even though we've seen shares being the shareholder being diluted with more shares being put in the market but it's still when you see free cash flow per share is still we are in the green we're still going up we still being proved and even in tough environments like we are now it is still able to deliver that another great point on my point of view but just before we moving forward this is the dividend fire and i highly recommend you to subscribe to this channel because here i'm sharing my journey to financial freedom i want to retire in 10 years and I've been very aggressive to this goal and I'll be sharing with you guys all my thoughts, all the dividend stocks that I'm buying um, and uh, why I'm buying them. Uh, I'll be bringing reviews about stocks as I'm doing about real income now. So I highly recommend you to subscribe to follow this journey and see how this path leads me to see how, how long it'll take for me to reach my financial freedom. Will I be able to do that 10 years as I'm trying to or I will do earlier? or do later you discover so if you subscribe to the channel and follow the videos okay let's talk about the portfolio so the portfolio is it's very concentrated in retail um, and it's important we see they have a very strong tenants just by looking at these tenants here you see billionaire companies companies that you see as well in the stock market you're able to buy their shares many of them is struggling at the moment as well because especially retail like we are in a um, and moments that uh, people are not have as much as money as before so it's a tough economic scenario so even though these companies are struggling they're not close to bankrupt or anything like that and they still they could be struggling their business but they still paying their rent which that's what matters for us shareholders of real income and it's a diversified business in different sectors even though we see many different sectors here when we put it in together all these stores and retails um, the retail gets up to over eight percent so it's very high concentrated in retail so very concerned in retail but they are diversifying other business um, second we see industrials here and now they are um, getting some exposure to gaming as well we see interesting they are diversifying throughout all their countries as well so the most diverse most the business is um us related but there's a decent geographic um they, they are diversified in different countries as well uh being the biggest of them outside the us uk great to see this is strong diversification but let's talk about some news uh, so some more recent reels um so the business is expanding so expand a bit more to europe there is expansion happening to ireland they um they expanding to other industry as well like here um, example the this vertical farming uh, so they're uh, expanding the business to new uh, they are seeking growth so to get growth they need to dip their toes in some different industry which some people don't like as much uh, because um, their ex most expertise is on retail but i think it's interesting and a business of this size should be able to expand to new industries uh, because if someone can do that is one of the, the strongest reads and if someone able to do that I would say real income is able to do that because the management have done some great jobs so far and I believe they have capability to get into new industries and get expertise there as well and one of the new recent news as well like the acquisition of Bellagio so they um, not the whole property there is not the whole Bellagio property they have but they have some percentage, percentage there so nearly a billion cash investment in Bellagio so uh, um, that's show them getting a bit of uh, a foot in um, on gaming VICI which properties you see they have a uh, their um, gaming REIT heavily in Las Vegas and they have a, a very strong growth metrics and so this uh this industry is seeking a lot of growth so it's good the uh, real real income is dipping into those there to get some of that growth will benefit the stock i would say and they expect to close the deal by the q4 2023 still on this year 
And we can see here in 2022, they already have a, a billionaire acquisition on the game industry as well. So uh, yeah, we can see they they doing some moves towards that industry and I'm excited to see the results that come from that. And what, what I, I'm doing, me and myself personally, my dividend portfolio, what I'm doing about knowing all that, that this is a reliable business with a very good dividend yield, there is, they have a, a growth metrics. They are a business that I believe myself. Remember, this is my opinion. Do your own research if you intend to buy this stock. This is not financial advice, advice but on my opinion, it's a very reliable business that have potential to keep growing over the years. And today is a dividend aristocrat. But if there is a REIT capable of come from dividend aristocrat for a dividend king, that someday I believe the real income will be able to deliver that. That's my opinion. And what I've been doing, I've been adding shares since it's been falling down, I've been adding shares. So I added 18 shares in August, more 10 shares in September and kept falling, more 41 shares in October this month. And my current position now is 69 shares with an average price of 52.5, nearly 53, a yield on cost of 5.8, which is paying me monthly now. I will be receiving monthly over $17 of real income. That's amazing addition for my portfolio. And the current yield for who is buying the current price is just around 6%. So yes, I'm buying. And the reason I'm buying, I was just speaking the video here. Um, I'm excited even to buy more. If they keep this, this stock on these levels, I'm really happy to make a real income of my core positions. You can see here, real income after all these acquisitions I did from August to October is my core position, is my biggest position. And I'm very bullish on that. And I would add even more because real income is a stock that I, I feel confident and I feel safe in having it as my core position. I'll feel my portfolio protected when I have uh, my the most of my capital located there. So there is over time I'll be build up some I will pick some stocks that will say okay I'm not only invest on this one but also this one I'm confident and have a bigger weight of my investment on this stock and real income fit the criteria for me. They might be not the biggest growth but they are on the biggest ring reliability and that's what I love about this stock. They have growth, they have reliability and they pay the cash. They pay the cash to my pocket. They have a very good dividend yield. This is also important because I'm a dividend investor and I want to retire with this dividend. So I need to be well paid. I want stocks that pay me well. Same way I choose a job that pay me well. I'm choosing stocks that pay me well. So that's uh, my point of view. And I want to discuss a bit about the herd mentality because we see a stock like real income falling down so much. And okay, there is the, um, it's the environment. Um, we know that's a high interest um, hurt rates, um, hurt economy, economy in general, which hurts uh, their tenants that who could be struggling to pay the rent. So that's all this around. And, but we know as well, like when we see history, like the interest go up, the interest go down, that's the game that the Feds play. So now it's in high interest. At some point, it will go down. But why most people are selling is because they heard the mentality. These people, they were buying when it was in the highs. The most people are buying when it's the highs. That's why it's the high, because the most people are buying. So people like to buy when it's high, when the thing's going up. They, oh my God, I have to go. I have to be part of real income is the best. The monthly stocks, uh, I, I can't be out of this one. And people go by and buy. Oh, it's the best, the best rate, the best investment, the best month pay, blah, blah, blah. All this talking. Now it's going down. You have this stock that's stronger than it was in previous years. Is it stronger than it was? Because why is it stronger? Uh, I showed the metrics for you guys about uh, FFO. FFO per share, free cash flow per share, uh, FFO ratio. We see all these metrics was improving over time. So which means they got better, they get stronger, the business got stronger, but it's still the price went down. So that's what I think some herd mentality is doing. When it's up, everyone wants to buy when it's expensive. When it's cheaper, no one wants it. 
and uh, bring that a famous quote of uh, if I'm not wrong if of Warren Buffett probably is not this the, the quote is a bit different but the the meaning is the same in the bear market the stocks go back to this true shareholder so I, I want to be the true shareholder I'm buying now and at some point the business will recover and I'll be seeing just enjoying the stock going up while I took advantage of the best opportunity that's what I think and let's discuss how much these 69 shares of real income will pay me over time uh, we see the forward uh, dividend growth rate is around uh, 3.5 around 4% 3 to 3 to 4% around um, expand annual share appreciation I leave 3 here because um, I think they will rebound really well uh, because they're so low price now but I'll put a 3 just to be conservative um, uh, my share price is around 53 at the moment I, I won't put any contribution I just check like um, in 10 years just keep if I no, buy no shares anymore and just keep this for 10 years and reinvest the dividends what I get and I even put some dividend tax rate because for everyone is different so I'm doing that just to share um, this thought with you so uh, I put a 20% so uh, fit different people okay uh, so in 10 years I'll be without adding any new share just reinvesting I will be doing 488 a year with a yielding cost of over 12 percent that's nice just adding no new money just keeping the 69 shares but I know the number will be way higher than that because I'll be adding more shares I'll be adding the most shares I can and that's the power of the dividend snowball guys um, the, this will be one of my car stocks and they'll be paying me monthly they'll be paying me a really nice dividend uh, around 6% and they'll be increasing every year because they have been doing this for nearly 30 years and I'm confident they can keep doing that for the next 30 years as well that's where I'm stands with Realtcom I'm buying my please leave your comments below and that's it I am Dividend Fire please subscribe to the channel to follow the next steps see you next video bye bye